Write Psalm 132. Say, I'm ready to hear. Flow in the Holy Ghost. Right. Now, if you look above the screen, it says Zion. Zion. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24 say, We have come to Zion, the city of God, the new Jerusalem. Okay, so who is Zion? Zion is the people of God. So in uh, Luke chapter 19, the Bible says, uh, Because they did not recognize the day of their visitation, God turned around and called another group to be called Zion. So before that, Israel was called Zion, and they had a mountain that was called Zion. Now Mount Zion is a spiritual mountain, which is the people of Almighty God. So Matthew 5, 14 says, We are now that city. We are on the hill. And in verse 16, it says, We are the light. Verse 14, we are the light. We are the city. We sit on a hill. And verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men, that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So Zion is a city on a hill. It's to be seen. Zion is to be seen. Okay. So Zion is on a hill. Zion is a light. And Zion is to be seen. And if Zion is seen, God will get the glory. Okay. If Zion is seen, God will get the glory. The church has been hiding in the closet for too long. It's time for the church to go public with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's time for the church to make news and not read news. Not to know about news, but to be in the news. I've always said it and now it's coming to pass. <laughs> so uh, the church is there to be seen by people and to experience the power of Almighty God. When the light of God shines forth from Zion, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, 60, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you and it says you know they will see and say to you and look and point their fingers at you and say behold Zion the city of the Lord when will they say Zion the city of the Lord when they see the light of God shining forth from the church they will say behold Zion till now they call Jerusalem in the Middle East or the people of Israel is called Zion because the the church is not yet seen. But when the church come to be seen, they will realize Zion is all over. Zion is the people of God. Light of God shining forth. Right. Let us do verse 7. <laughs> Let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. Now we know the earth is the footstool. Isaiah 66, the heaven is, heavens are thy throne, the earth is thy footstool. So let us worship. So as long as we're walking on this earth, we're supposed to be worshippers. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place and the ark of your symbol, the symbol of your strength. So God is about to arise and come to the place where he will find rest. Let your priests, this is us, because we have been made priests by the blood of the Lamb. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. Verse 13. For the Lord, now let's see, has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place. Forever, says the Lord, here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Verse 17. There will I make a horn, talking about strength. Spring forth and bud for David. I have ordained and prepared a lamp for my anointed. And his enemies will I clothe with shame. So what does the lamp do? It shines. What does it shine? It shine, shines light forth. So God says, I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. Okay, so John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, everything that was made was made by Him, without Him was nothing made that was made, in Him was life, the life was the light of man, okay, in Him was life, the Word, and this life was the light of man. Okay, there was a man sent from God who testified about the light, he was not the light, but the true light shines into darkness. And the darkness comprehendeth 
it not. In other words, darkness cannot overshadow the shining of the light. So if the light shines, I don't care how dark your world might be. A speck, a spark, a contact, an anointing of light, the smallest speck of light will bring light into your dark world. I don't care how dark it is around you. I don't care how dark it feels with your cancer, your sickness, your disease, your problem. One speck of light. God says, I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. When Christ came into the world as a light unto the earth, he shined in darkness and darkness could not overwhelm or overshadow or comprehend it. Now it says, but God, the true light, Jesus Christ, was coming into this world to enlighten every single person. You are one. This light is supposed to enlighten you. So you are supposed to be enlightened and God has prepared a lamp for the anointed. If the light of God shines in you, you're going to be anointed one of God. And the minute the anointing hits you, your enemies will be shamed. Now, I I just want to touch on that. How is enemy shamed? The Bible tells us in Job chapter 8 and Psalm 126 exactly how God's going to shame your enemies. God says, when he fills your mouth with laughter and your tongue with rejoicing, your enemies will be filled with shame. And I tell you, the Bible says in Isaiah 61, he's prepared for you an anointing of joy for the spirit of heaviness and depression. And Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 was anointed with the oil of joy above his fellow men because he loved righteousness and hated unrighteousness God is about to anoint you when he anoints you the thing that will spring forth is joy and when joy comes and your mouth is filled with laughter your enemies will be put to shame so you're going to have light you're going to be anointed you're going to have joy you're going to have darkness chased away and you're going to see your enemies flee and you're going to live in victory 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 First Peter chapter 1. Zion, people of Almighty God, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Pop, 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 pop. Zion, be prepared. Hallelujah. So on this earth, there are only two kingdoms. The one is darkness and the other one is light. So you don't have to search for, you know, Islamic kingdoms and Hindu kingdoms and, you know, Buddhist kingdoms and Christian kingdoms. There's only two. Either you're in darkness, either you're in light. The one in darkness is the devil. The one in the light is Christ. Because Christ is the light that came into the world to enlighten every single person. Right? Are you ready? So let's take a scripture that's been quoted tonight. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says the following. We're going to read now. It says, concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Now Peter is preaching to the household of Cornelius. How God anointed him. God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about... Because he was anointed, he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Okay, so uh, this is dark, that is dark, that is light, that is light. That is light. So light always overshadows darkness. So when the anointing, so the anointing tonight equals the light of God. What is light? Light is energy. What is energy? It is power. So you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So what is the Holy Spirit about to do in your life? He's supposed to bring a light in you that will shine forth so bright. So Zion, it's time to be seen of the world. And when Zion shines her light, the world will come and they will bring their people, bring their riches. The Bible says they will come from afar off because they will say, we can see that the Lord is with you. And you're going to be the people that's going to bless them, bring them here. And they're going to in return bless you with their riches. That's what Isaiah 60 says, right? Acts, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race. 
We are not ordinary. We are a royal priesthood. We are a dedicated nation. God's own purchase, special people. Ha ha, I like it. Special people. That you may set forth the wonderful deeds. There it comes again. And display the virtues and perfections of him. Who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness into his marvelous light. There it is. God has called you out of darkness. Come on church. So out of an unanointed life into an anointed life. And out of a powerless life into a powerful life. God wants to clothe you with power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Let's go to Isaiah and follow the story. Isaiah 9. Verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. Now you know that is quoted in Matthew 4, talking about Jesus, the people that saw and sat in darkness. Saw great. So Jesus came as a light into a dark world. Verse 6. Now it tells you how this light came. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, I, I don't know if you even closely start to understand what I'm reading in this scripture. The light of Almighty God is... If you want the wonderful God, the counselor, the prince of peace, the everlasting father, the mighty God to operate in every area of your life, the whole fivefold thing, the whole fivefold anointing. If you want the fivefold anointing of the most high God in your life, all you need is the light of God. He came as the light and this light is called that. Let's go on to chapter 10. And what will you do in the day of visitation? <laughs> now look at this don't wait for this day to arrive people put this day in a great tribulation era that's sometime yet to come we're talking about the son is now born child is born the son is now given Christ is now walking on the face of the earth so this scripture is to be fulfilled in his time okay so he says the day of your visitation what are you going to do in that day so what was the day of visitation? I quoted it earlier for those who are still with me. I quoted out, out of Luke chapter 19. They did not recognize the day of their visitation. When Christ came riding in on a donkey, the people cried out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus said, You did not recognize the day of your visitation. Therefore, there will be not left a stone upon another. And God says, I'm going to take my glory away from you, and I'm going to give it to another group. And they shall be called sons of Almighty God, and I shall be a father to them, and they shall be children to them. For you have rejected at me now I'm turning to another group and I'm gonna call them Zion so Zion it's about time for God to walk in our midst and bring the anointing oil of the fullness of the Godhead bodily the wonderful counselor mighty God Prince of Peace everlasting father put it right on the inside of you for the God it dwells bodily in Christ and we have this fullness in him Colossians 2 verses 9 and 10 and Zion it's time to get on that hill and shine forth your good works as the light and when you are seen people are going to take notice it's time for the church to go public with the gospel of Jesus Christ arise and shine Zion for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you okay chapter 10 let's go to somewhere else verse where shall we go verse 12 is a good verse to go to therefore when the Lord has completed finished says another translation all his work 
of chastisement and purification to be executed on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem. It shall be that he will inflict punishment on the fruit, the thoughts, the words, the deeds, the stout, the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the haughtiness of his pride. When the Lord has completed all this work of Isaiah 9, 10, and 11. I'm going to be with you now. When God, God says, there's work that I will finish. When God has finished his work. In John chapter 4, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. He came back. The disciples came back and found him there. And the woman is now going back to Samaria. And they started talking to him about food. And Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. For I have a work that I must finish. Okay. Then he goes to John chapter 5. He heals a sick man at the pool of Bethesda. And they start arguing to him about the healing and the miracle power. And he says again in chapter 5, I have a work of God that I must finish. Talking about miracles. Okay. Then in John chapter 7, Jesus is praying. He said, Father, the work that you have given me to finish, I will finish it. And then in John chapter 19, Jesus hung on the cross and he said, it is finished. Okay. If you don't understand, he did a finished work so that Zion can be, so that Zion, I'm serious, the Germans is jumping him, so that Zion can be the dwelling place of the most high God, so God can send forth his light in your life. Verse 27, let's see if you're with me. And it shall be in that day, I just wrote it on the board, that the burden shall depart from off your shoulders and the yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness of the anointing. Chapter 11, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem, stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and I shall make him of quick. Oh man, God says I'm bringing my fullness of my spirit. He came in the Christ. Now Christ has done a finished work. Now it's time for you to get in the anointing that will destroy every yoke on your life in that day. That day has come, people, when Christ was crucified because that root came out of dry ground. And Jesus said in John chapter 16, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. But whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, in that day, he will give you. When? When the root comes out of the dry ground. When Christ died and he came out of the tomb, that is when the rod sprung up. And he said, in that day, whatsoever you ask in my name. Okay, now that refers directly to in that day, the anointing. Where have we got the anointing somewhere? In that day, there it is. In that day, the yoke is going to be destroyed because of the anointing. So, did that day come? Did Christ die? Is Christ risen? So it's time, church, to be the anointed people of God, to spring forth and let your light shine. So Zion, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Let's go to Isaiah 42. I've got to close. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God, or God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it. And spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. And I will hold your hand. And will keep you. And give you for a covenant to the people. For a light of the Gentiles. To open the blind eyes. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. And them that sit in darkness. Out of the prison house. I am the Lord. And that is my name. I have called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. 
He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light to call you Zion, the people of God. He says, I will be a father to you. You will be sons and daughters to me. And I will put my spirit on the inside of you. And you will be a light to the nations. And there will be no more hurt done to the mountain of the Lord called Zion, the people of God. But it's time to arise and shine for your light has come and realize who you are. So let's close. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verse 12. Verse 12. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David. No, verse 12. Jesse sent and brought him. That is David. You remember all the other sons, not one was the one. Are all your sons here? Verse 11. Verse 12. Then he sent for David. David had a healthy reddish complexion. Must have been in the Sunday, okay. And beautiful eyes. Could have been me. And was fine looking. Yeah. No. You can only love the world if you love yourself. Okay. We're still struggling with this complex. Okay. The Lord said to Samuel, this is the word, arise. Anoint him. That is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. (laughs) Now you should have heard. I'm finished. When the prophet looked over the sons, said, is there not another one? He said, oh, I got the shepherd boy and brought him. He said, arise. So we started, you, Zion, arise, shine, for your light has come. Now God speaks to the prophet. He said, now you arise and anoint them with oil. And from that day, <laughs> in that day, the burden will be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In that day, he said, so arise, anoint him. Anoint him now. And from that day, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and stayed upon him. I tell you, First John chapter 2, verse 27 says, You have the anointing of the Holy One that abides on the inside of you. We have something that we can give to the world. <laughs> Clap your hands. Right. So it's time. There's two risings tonight. One is from the church, Zion, arise, shine, for your light has come. The other one is from the prophet, rise and anoint them with oil. And from that day, the Spirit of the Lord will. We've got all the ingredients in the oil. And God is all the ingredients of the Godhead. We've got the hands. We've got the oil. You've got the body. And you present it as a living sacrifice. Come, Selvan, go stand here. We're going to anoint you. And when you are anointed, I don't care if you can stand or not stand. I want you to experience the touch from the Almighty God. No vibrating chair can give you what God can give you. One touch from the Almighty. (laughs) One touch from the Almighty God. Just one touch from the Almighty God. Life never, ever be the same again. Never, never be the same. Never be. Just keep the mic there by my mouth. Just get the mic. Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Touch of Christ. Some will scream, some will cry, some will laugh. It will be deep cries, it will be deep laughter. But at the end of this day, God must touch you. And you must be the anointed vessel to shine forth your light in a dark world. Ready is right. 
Are you ready tonight to be anointed of God? Be anointed of God. Let's get this family here. Let's get this whole family. Come. Family, father, mother, grandpa, grandma, uncle, daughter, aunt. What we're going to do is we're going to rub you with oil, but God is going to rub you with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We're going to rub you with oil. God's going to rub you with the Holy Ghost. We're going to rub oil on you. God's going to rub the anointing of the Holy Ghost on you. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Touch them. Bless them, our Father. We. Bless. Bless. Oh Lord, I love you forever. You're there in your house. You're about to receive a Holy Ghost quake. A tsunami of God's love. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's agree for our television audience. Woo-hoo. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That's normally when the cameraman goes out that the anointing falls in your house. 